This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. First, can I just kind of thank uh, Philip and Miranda for letting me do this? <laughs> because this, this is, this is uh, a thrill, a joy, and honour, because this is something I've been talking about for the last thousand years. For, and actually, coming, to make it, make it real, as I hope I will do today, is a, a real honour. So first, before I, get, before I get going, who's heard of John Blank? Show of hands. Okay, well, 50, 50, that's great. Okay, great, great. What, what, what I'm going to take you on is a journey in terms of how art and the archives can come together and mean something today. Because something I'm really passionate about is that history is real, it's relevant, it's today. Because if you don't know your history, you're like a tree that's fallen from a leaf that doesn't know it's a tree. Who's listening? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The, the, the genesis of this comes from something that I worked on with Miranda, image and reality in, in Renaissance England, where Miranda uh, presented her uh, 350 plus black Africans, or people of African descent that she found in the archives. And I, and I presented the images that I had. And there always used to be some kind of conf conflict between Miranda and I, because I always had the best pictures. It used to be quite annoying, because I, I, I had many pictures. What was interesting about my pictures, my pictures I showed you, were all fictitious. They were all fabrications. Whereas the very few that Miranda had, or the, very few, or the one, <laughs> the very few that Miranda was a real person. No, no, <laughs> exactly, exactly. It was very real. And so it was, it was, it was, in, that, it was in that kind of surface of pictures. And I remember the last conference, David Olasogo talked about at the BBC, getting, getting Tudor history on the BBC, on black Tudor history, was hard because there was no pictures. There was no pictures. So what, what, what we're going to try and do with the John Blank Project is redress that balance. It all starts with these two buildings here. The first building on the left is the College of Arms. They've got an archive of, uh, of arms. They, they, they do, when you want an arm, an arm mural, you go to them and they make your arms. You know, I don't know. Um, Exactly. <laughs> you go there and, and they make, I was thinking of Elton John, he got one made there. You can go and buy one. The other is, does anyone know what the other one is? That, that's the old public record office. And to get there back in the day, that's the public record office, that's where the archives live. And today it's the National Archive in Kew. We're talking London. Well, yeah, might be, might be. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about London. That's the public record office. And it's, it, it's um, back in those days, you had to, have a, you had to be of good standing and a, a letter from your tutor and, and the Pope to get into this building. But luckily, the man on the bottom got in, a guy called Sidney Anglo. And Sidney Anglo was the guy who made the connection between the two archives, between the art that he found in the, uh, the College of Arms and the archive that he found in the public record. And he found, he found John Blank. He literally discovered John Blank. He brought him back. After over half a millennium, he brought him back from the records. An outstanding story. And as with much of black history, it's a footnote. It's a footnote to his wittily entitled The Court Festivals of Henry VIII, a study based upon the account books of John Henry, treasurer of the chamber. At the time, Sir Sidney was doing his, doing his PhD, and he was going through the records, to the archives, translating them, and just listing what, 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 inst what, what instruments were played, how much would have paid. It was just a, a, a database, very similar to, to say, what, the, what, what Miranda's 350. Uh, she just lists of people. And there he makes the connection, the footnote, he says, I believe this John Blank, because John Henry refers to playing a black trumpet, John Blank, he says, in fact, I believe that this John Blank was in fact a Negro in the great role of the tournament at the Westminster 1511 that great role of the tournament at Westminster. I prefer to call it the Westminster tournament role. And it's preserved at the College of Arms. A Negro musician is twice depicted amongst the, the king's trumpets. This, I think, was John Blank, the black trumpeter. This, I think, was John Blank, the black trumpeter. Now, I've since had the pleasure of having some correspondence with Sidney Anglo, and he's quite modest about it. The fact that he thought he was just doing his job. You know, he was writing about the things that concern him, and, and he made that connection. Because we, we can see it here, this is the, um, the, the John Heron uh, account, where, where you can see on the top right there, whoops, let me get a moment, where it's it circled, it says, item to John Blank, the black trumpet for his month, the wages of November passed at 
8D, 8 pence, 8 old pence a day. And that, that, that was 20 shillings. 20 shillings, or what's 20 shillings? A pound. A pound. He was paid a pound a month. And then we can see the actual Westminster tournament roll rolled out. It's, it's a 60 foot roll, 60 foot, about 18 meters. It's about 14, 14, 14 and a half inches, which is, what's that? I don't know, 10, about 30 centimeters wide. And it's, it, apparently it's in, it's in remarkably good condition for being over 500 years old. It's been rolled out. Rolled out there now. What the roll is about, the roll celebrates. A really, a really amazing piece of British history. It was, it was the birth of Henry VIII's son to Catherine of Aragon. And this is the centerpiece. That's a, this, 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 oh, I don't know, just go back a bit. No, 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 keep it on, stay there. Come up, come up there. It was, it was to celebrate the birth of his son to Catherine of Aragon. And, and the, here we have the king arriving with his entourage at the, at the tournament. Now this was, this, this was a tournament that, that, was, uh, that was to celebrate, as I say, the, the birth of the king, but it was to celebrate in a very special way. It was a chival <laughs> chivalry played an important part in it. That all of the knights that came, all the knights that came were all friends or part of his court, and they played a particular knight. And, and Henry, being the king, was the, uh, the, the call loyal, the, the, the principal one. And this, this shows him arriving with his entourage, and each knight had a similar entourage. Obviously not as grand as the king's, but they're there on, they're there on the scroll. The centerpiece, the centerpiece of the scroll is this scene here. This is the king before Catherine of Aragon and, 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 her, and, and the ladies, and also the members of the court uh, having a tournament, uh, knocking some other knight off. And you, you, you can guess who won this tournament. <laughs> yeah? The king won the tournament. And so the, 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 uh, the scroll celebrates that fact and the fact that, that the, the boy was born. And on there, we have the two appearances, the appearance of, of John Blank. Here we see them in, uh, in, 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 within, within six, six trumpeters arriving. And this is in pretty poor condition. But can you see him there at the back center? Yeah, not very poor condition. But the next one, and this is the most celebrated image. I'm sure those who know John Blank know this image well. This image is, in fact, the most successful image of the College of Arms. The College of Arms is a private institution, so they have to make their money by selling these coats of arms where you go buy them. So, so they sell this image. If you want to use that image, you have to pay them. I have to pay them to use this image in my project. And, and they're very pragmatic. You know, we're a business. Unlike the, Nash, the, unlike the, um, the um, National Archive, you don't have to pay within reason to use, to use, to use the images. But this is a, an extraordinary image here. We've got two images of John Blank the, 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 in announcing the arrival and announcing the departure at, at, at the end of the joust. And, and if, if time permitted me, and I'll, I'll, I'll permit myself the time, the black trumpet at the court, I think, represents England moving up a scale in European history. What we're talking about here, his dad, Henry VII, had kind of united the country and he was reaching out to Europe, hence the, the marriage to Catherine of Aragon. And part of that tradition, part of the European court, was the idea of the, uh, the, the trumpeter, the uh, announcing your presence, and often they were black trumpeters. So here's England being very fashionable, Henry being fashionable, having a black, a black trumpeter. And interesting enough, there's uh, Francis I, a contemporary of, of um, Henry's, he, he too had a black trumpet in his court, very similar to Henry, uh, Henry D. Oh, very similar to, black, to, to, to John Blank. But he's, he's in a tradition that reflects England moving, moving up the European League. But, but, that we, but enough of that, let's move on. Let's talk about John Blank in the archives. Um, it, says in, if it's, it says he flourished between 1507 and 1512. Simply flourished, because that's, that's, well, that's the record that we know of him. 1507, as I say, he was paid at 8p a day. We know he played at Henry VII's funeral, and he played at Henry, Henry VIII's coronation. Obviously, you see the, we see him at the Westminster tournament role. He, was, he, he petitioned for wages. We have a, a, a petition for him to Henry VIII. We don't know when, exactly when it is. You know, we can speculate, but we know it, it, it's in there, it's written, it's got the king's signature on, that he should be paid more, wage increase. And we know he's he going to be married in 1512. The king wants to give him a bonnet or, or, or some, a gown for, for his wedding. And then we know, well, 1514, he's not mentioned at the full list. So somewhere between 1512 and 1514, he disappeared. 
And in some ways, this is part of the frustration of the archives. Like, we don't know what happened before. We don't know how he got here. There's some speculation. Did he come over with Catherine of Aragon? Did he come on his own? We don't really know. And equally, he marries. Did he marry someone local? Did he stay in London? Did he go abroad? And you know, that's what makes the archives so fascinating because I'm sure they're there somewhere. They're there somewhere. And they're waiting for the way to be discovered. So that's John Blank. And that John Blank is celebrated today in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. He has a presence, and he's, pre he's printed there as the first person of African descent in Britain who, who, who both we have a picture of and we have a record of, so we know he's an actual person. And, uh, okay, I'll say, and Miranda wrote, actually wrote that piece there. <laughs> it's got big, thank you, that So it, it's an excellent piece, and it's, it's, a, it's free. It's one of, the, one of the parts of the ONDB that is free. What does that mean? You should be able to click on and go to it without, without, without having to pay to, to see that. You can get into the ODMB in any library. Yeah, thank you. Did you hear that? You can get, if you've got a library card, you can get, just write your, what, what, what happens at the most libraries, I remember. Okay, so that was the reality of it. I just want to share a bit, with, a bit, of, a bit, a, a bit with you of, about the image that I used to talk about. I, used, I talked about the Black Magus figure. And if this character was the centre of my work, and has been, this guy's been with me for almost 10 years now. Does anybody recognise him? <laughs> he's from your part of the country. He's from Devon. He's, he's, he's on here, he's on, this, he's on, this, he's on a, a, a rude screen. This is, the screen's about this big. It's about that big. So you give you some idea of it. Yeah? About that big. And this is about 1507, 1511. We have up to 1520, that's when we believe it. So is it that exactly contemporary with, uh, with John Blank? So there's an image of a black man, but we don't know his name. We, we, we have to ask, where does the image come from? Well, that, that's quite simple. It dates back, the, the, the image of, in painting of the black magus dates back to this figure by Roger van der Weyden in Germany about 1455. And this is an extraordinary piece. It's, yeah, I don't know if you know van der Weyden, he's a fantastic artist. The quality of his work is just palpable, beautiful, beautiful. And he had a student called Memling. Memling copied him, and he, made, he copied his master's image, but with one telling difference. With one telling difference. You can, can you see the difference? Yeah. And that image of the Black Magus moved across Europe. And it, even, it, it reached England about, almost 50 years later in the form of, the, of this piece in Devon. It comes from Devon. It comes from Devon. Again? Well, we don't know exactly, but it's a great question. I've discovered that there's a piece very similar to it. I discovered, me personally, bigging myself up, sorry about that. No, it's in a VA that's, that's very similar to it. So it's, it's in, in, in Ogbre. It's in, in Ogbre. If you go to St. Peter's in Ogbre, you'll see a piece very similar to that. But what's interesting, the piece in Ogbre has one piece missing. And that's the black character, and that's been replaced by a Saracen which is chopping off someone's head. So there's a lot of history in that piece. So, but we, know, we, are, we are reasonably certain it comes from Devon. So there we are. That, 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 that's how the Black Magus figure come, comes about. And in terms of being part of the adoration scene, the Christian adoration scene, it's a conflation of lots of ideas. In terms of biblical study, people trying to reconcile the Old Testament with the New Testament. Some ideas about the world coming together at end times. So the black figure has many kind of reasons to be there. And you have to keep in mind, no black king visited Europe at, this, at that time. So this figure is a complete fiction, a fabrication. So, but however, <laughs> there are many thousands of images of this black king around Europe at the time. Many images of the black king, but he never existed. So each one, it's not just a fiction, it's a fiction of the, art, the, of the artist's imagination, the patron's imagination, or the liturgic imagi liturgical imagination of that time. So, so here's, here's Im coming back to image and reality. We've got the reality of John Blank, and we've got this, this absolutely fatuous. No, it's not fatuous, because these images mean something. They're very special images. But these images are not of real people. These images are ideas. They're ideas. So, it was, in that, it, was, it was in that I, I, I wanted to try and make John Blank a bit more real, a bit more real. And it was, uh, it was a trip to Tower Hill that really, that really put it into perspective. Who knows where Tower Hill is? It's in London, the Tuesdays in London. Who's been, who's been there? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? 
you know what this is? This is a, a series of murals by an artist called Stephen B. Watley of the life and times of Henry VIII. No, no, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. Sufficient for this me and this audience is the life of the <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. And there's one particular image that really stands out for me. This is this one, which is which is mod, which is his modern interpretation of a scene of that central scene from the Westminster Tournament Roll. And this, to me, this is a magical piece of art in the sense that you're bringing something that was over 500 years old. He was bringing it to life, making it real, making it contemporary, using a modern artist's vocabulary to making history real. So not only is it a great image, personally it's a very exciting image, because on the right-hand corner, on the right-hand corner, let's see, the right-hand corner, guess what? There's John Blank. And what's really exciting about this is when, when, when I met Stephen, I had the chance to talk to him about this work, he didn't know who John Blank was. He, had, he just knew he was an interesting character, aesthetically, artistically interesting, to put in the scene. He didn't know any of the history and what, what it meant in terms of the, the social, the social course history of the day. It's just that it was, it was an important, well, it looked good. And Stephen's, uh, uh, Stephen's a really fantastic character. Isn't he? And it got me thinking. I thought, well, look, I'd like to own a piece of this. But I couldn't, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't afford, I wanted a, a, a drawing by a painter, I couldn't afford a drawing. I said, can you do a drawing for me? And I said, well, I can, I can afford an A5 drawing. You know what an A5 drawing is? <laughs> but he was really generous, and he, he did an A4 drawing for the same price, and there it is. And that got me thinking, that got me thinking, you know? The fact that, look, an A4 drawing, well, if he can do that of someone he didn't know, he just had a feeling for, what, 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 would, what, what would happen if we gave artists the, some idea of who he was and let the, let the artistic imagination run free? So th th that, that was the genesis of the, of the John Blank project. What it is, I, I work with artists, I commission them, I say, I've got an A4 drawing, I only, and I give them the background, I show them the Westminster Tournament Roll, I show them John Blank's history, and say, come up with something. So I've, I've worked with this, this Stephen, this Rowan, Pisa, the forward count. These are all artists who have produced work. Let me go back a bit. They produce work based on their idea of John Blank, their own personal aesthetic idea. I've also talked to poets, got some poets in there, got some music in there. They're inspired by John Blank in the same tradition, almost, as the Black Magus was, was inspired, the, the artists who drew were given a, a commission, were given some instructions to create their, their image. I give them, or we have the archives, and the art give them the, the inspiration to create, to create their own John Blank. There's going to be no images of John Blank online, of my John Blank. The only one will be Stevens. That was the first, and it's a very special one. I get all the artists to, to give me a little sentence. I imagine John Blank as. And I get them to say, oh, and here he talks about the fact he didn't know who John Blank was. It's only through working with myself and Miranda that he realized the, the importance of, of John Blank. So each artist does a draw, an A4 drawing and makes a statement. And those statements will be on, will be on, on, on the web. This is a, a little bit of idiosyncrasy on my part. And the slide's in here. I was meant to delete. I'll share it with you anyway. If you notice John Blank's hand, what do you notice about it? Well, it was that that really insp further inspired me. And I used that to energize the artist to say, look, that John Blank is not the real John Blank. They've just made him, the, the artist who did it was, in, was sensitive enough to put a black face in there, but that's not a, a black face. In the same way, those trumpeters are not real trumpeters because they look, they're, they're, they're stock images, they popped on. So th th I used that to inspire them to come up with their idea of John Blank, how they see it. And this, this, this is, this is um, to give you some idea of what the installation will look like, we're looking at something in November. This is one of a sample installation. There'll be the two, there'll be the two repro vellum reproductions of the entrance and exit of John Blank. Uh, getting them on vellum has been a real pain in the bottom. I've been talking since, <laughs> since January now, trying to get them on vellum. And the, 
it, it, it's handcrafted in this thing. It should be bought in the 21st century. But he says to me, I'm using techniques that they would have been using back in the day. So it's taken back. But to, so all the pictures are going to be black and white and they're going to be A4 frames. That's a sample kind of installation we're going to have for my uh, John Blank exhibition. And there'll be poetry and there'll be music and there'll be people talking about John Blank. And right now, it was supposed to be in May, yeah? But you try working with artists. <laughs> the artist hour is like a week. The week is, a, you know, so I'm looking at November now. I'm looking at November, and it will be in November. I'm not going to wait anymore. But the other, there's been another spin-off of, uh, of John Blank. I, I, I take the project into schools. This is me working with a group. I take the idea of John Blank and his history and the Black Magus and his history take it into schools and get them to do their John Blank. This is, this is me working with the school. And I say to them, if it's good enough, I'll put it on the wall. So far, none of them have been good enough. But have you said, no, 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 no. What happens is, no, what happens I show, I show them some of the work, and they say, they admit that it's not so good. I've also, I've also taken it into prison. We've done, we've done a session in prison, and we take them to the history, and then we, and we talk about their life. Because one of the interesting things about this, creating a John Blank, and I encourage the people to do it, it's about identity. Who is John Blank? You could be John Blank. You could be a descendant of John Blank. You know, we don't know. You know, use your imagination. Your imagination will set you free. Be who you want to be through John Blank. You know, and we have a bit of fun. And, you know, we, we got, what's, the, the, the prison ones were slightly better, but still, <laughs> still not good enough. But, 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 but we, 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 had a, we had a lot, we had a lot of fun doing it. Well, look, so where are we are now? The, the National Archive is still there, and I would like to believe, I would like to believe there's more of John Blank in the archive. I would like to believe, you know, we're going to find out is who he married. Who he married. When he went to at least after England, did he go to Denmark? I don't know, Sweden? Because there was a, there was, they were all connected. The Royal Courts were all connected at that time. So who knows? So that's the John Blank project. You know, the idea of bringing the art and the archive together, making it relevant, making it a bit of excitement, making it exciting today, and, and having a bit of fun. Thank you for your time. <laughs>